In this chapter, we discussed the concept of electric forces and we said electric forces are non-contact forces that are able to act over a distance as a result of electric charges found in protons and electrons within atoms and molecules and compounds. In this lecture, we're going to explore the importance of electric forces and the role they play within the processes that take place within the human cell. So the human cell is composed of many types of organelles and molecules and compounds. Now the majority of the human cell is composed of cytoplasm, which is a fluid-like material that contains mostly water. So that essentially means that in a way we can think of the human cell as a sea of molecules, a sea of water molecules which are flying about and moving about with random and rapid motion. They're colliding with one another and they're exchanging energy. Now the one thing that organizes this motion of molecules within the human cell are electrical forces. Electric forces are the forces that govern all the different types of processes that take place within the human cell. And this includes processes like protein synthesis, cell respiration, we have translation, we also have DNA replication, which we'll talk about in this lecture. So, the biological cell is composed mostly of water. Inside the cell, all the different types of processes, and I mean all the different types of processes, take place as a result of two different principles. Principle number one, random and rapid motion of the molecules and atoms found within the cytoplasm. And two, electrical forces which act to organize, arrange, and essentially carry out all the processes within the human body. Now, before we get into our discussion of DNA structure and DNA replication and how electrical forces play a role in this process, let's briefly discuss another process that takes place within the mitochondria of the human body. So, within the mitochondria, we have a process known as cell respiration. And in this process, ATP molecules are produced and ATP molecules store energy which we can use to carry out mechanical functions like moving our hands and so on and so forth. Now, the entire premise of production of ATP is a result of oxygen. Oxygen is able to accept electrons within this process, within the mitochondria, because of the charge within our protons found within the oxygen. So oxygen is very electronegative. And so as a result of electric forces, it is able to accept electrons and that creates a proton gradient. So the entire purpose of the mitochondria is to produce ATP. And it produces ATP as a result of electric forces between the atoms and molecules found within that organelle. Now, we have other types of organelles like the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, in which electric forces play a very important role. For example, within a Golgi apparatus, we have proteins which are packaged and then sent off to different parts of the cell and outside the cell and within the cell membrane. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on discussing the structure of DNA and DNA replication and the role electric forces play within the structure and this replication. So, what exactly is DNA? Well, let's look at the following statement. Genetic information is passed down from parent to child from one generation to the next in the form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acids, which is composed of genes that code for proteins. So DNA is essentially a double helix structure in which we have two different DNA strands. Now each DNA strand is composed of four types of molecules called nucleotides. So we have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. So, 
DNA is a double helix structure that is held together by electrical forces between pairs of nucleotides. So the reason that these two strands of DNA form a double helix is because of electric forces between our opposite nucleotides. Now there are two pairs of nucleotides. Adenine always bonds with thymine and only thymine and guanine only bonds with cytosine. So we have two pairs of nucleotides and let's examine why that is so and let's take adenine thymine as one particular example so we have the thymine molecule and we have the adenine molecule now notice on these molecules we have different atoms and these different atoms have different electronegativities Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and that means it pulls electrons closer to the oxygen and that develops a small charge, a small negative charge on this oxygen. Now nitrogen is more electronegative than the H atom that it is attached to and so the nitrogen takes electrons more readily than our H atom will and that means a positive, a small positive charge will develop on this H atom. Now let's look at adenine. On the adenine we have an N atom and we have an N atom. So this N atom takes away electrons from the H and this N atom takes away electrons from this carbon and this carbon. And so we have a positive charge here and a negative charge here. So we have a positive and a negative, we have a positive and a negative. And because thymine and adenine can get close enough, the electric forces between these two nucleotides will be high enough for them to bond. So the reason that guanine and cytosine cannot get close enough is because the shapes are incorrect. These two molecules have the proper shape to get close enough so that the distance is small and the force is high. And the force we're talking about is an electric force. It's a force between positive and negative charges. So once again, adenine is able to fit close enough only to thymine. As a result of this proximity of our two charges, the electrical force is high enough to hold these two nucleotides together. So remember, electrostatic force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So, that basically means as the distance decreases, the force increases. Now, collectively, all these electrical forces between all the adjacent nucle nucleotides within our DNA molecule, these forces hold the double helix together. And it looks something like this. So we have one DNA strand shown in green and a second DNA strand shown in brown. So the same exact thing happens between guanine and cytosine, except in guanine and cytosine, we have three electric forces formed instead of two electric forces as in this case. Now, let's talk about DNA replication. So right before the cell divides, DNA has to replicate. What happens is a chunk of proteins, enzymes, attach itself to our DNA and unravel that DNA so that our double strands, our single strands, are exposed. And now our strands can be copied so that we can give that DNA to the offspring. So during replication, a set of enzymes unravels the double helix and attaches itself onto the DNA strands and begins adding the new nucleotides to form that new strand of DNA. Now the question is, how does it know to pair adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine? What exactly directs DNA replication? Well, it turns out electrical forces direct DNA replication. So, 
let's suppose we have the following DNA uh, strand, a single DNA strand that was unraveled by the enzymes, by the proteins, and now when we unravel them, we essentially break these electrical bonds within our adjacent, within our opposite nucleotides. So let's suppose we break this bond, and now when we break this bond, we have only one of the nucleotides as shown. And notice when we break this bond, we're going to have a positive charge here and a negative charge here shown. So now within this mixture, we're going to have a lot of different nucleotides moving about with random and rapid motion. And these nucleotides are going to collide with this adenine nucleotide. Now, if adenine collides, what will happen? Well, adenine cannot fit close enough to these regions to form strong enough electric forces. And so when adenine collides, it will bounce off and move away. Now, if guanine and cytosine collides, the same exact thing happens. The fit isn't perfect, electric forces aren't large enough, and so that means they won't hold together, and these two nucleotides will move away. Finally, when the thymine collides with the adenine, it will fit very closely. And that means because the proximity, because the distance is low enough, the electric forces will be high enough to hold it in place long enough for the enzyme, the proteins, to actually attach it and form these bonds. So once again, Hundreds and thousands of nucleotides are bouncing around, but only the correct pair can get close enough and stay long enough for the enzymes to attach those nucleotides. So what exactly directs DNA replication? Well, electrical forces between our nucleotides directs our DNA replication. In fact, if we examine any process whatsoever within the human cell, that process will be governed by electrical forces. So electrical forces govern all the processes that take place on the microscopic level within the human cell and other cells.